Hello friends, uh, today I'm back again to create a new reverse engineering tutorial video that will cover up two quick concepts. Uh, one is supposed to be how does a loop look um, in, in an assembly language construct and the second one is how um, do we know if the values that have been passed into the functions are they passed by reference or passed by, val uh, passed by values. So let's look at the very first instance. In this case, this is the main um, uh, function of, of, of a program, of an executable that I've created. Um, in this case, we can look at this as, as usually you can see here for us to define push EBP, move EBP, um, and ESP, and ESP subtract ESP. So this is the prologue for uh, the function before it calls and this one is for me. Immediately after that call, we see a call for the Z4 loop. In this case, it seems like since there is no push instruction or no adjustment of any register, it depends obviously on the compilers, most of the C++ compilers, which are uh, the Visual Studio, uh, or, uh, sorry, the Visual C++ and Visual Studio based compilers would use the stack by doing a push instructions. However, um, the GCC based compilers always do, um, you know, push the instructions but they would also do the prologues with an ESP to make it balanced out. So this is a, by looking at a, a prologue instruction obviously we come to know uh, possibly what, what which of these two compilers might have been used. There are obviously other compilers like Bordel and Compiler and stuff like that and they would do certain things differently. So if um, with uh, a GCC plus compiler usually it does adjust the instructions sometimes in by uh, using registers, uh, so it really varies most of the times, but 90% um, of the times the GCC as well as the Visual Studio based Microsoft based compilers always do a push before uh, uh, before passing out any arguments. Um, uh, X, and this this is a good part that it helps us to understand how many arguments might have been passed just by how many push. Obviously the other way to find out is how many instructions is with respect to understanding the the type uh, of um, the calls so is it a standard call or a C declared call, and then seeing the return instruction either inside that actual function or before function, and identifying um, how many bytes have been cleared, and that would indicate the total number of uh, you know arguments as well. So that was a quick reminder of the earlier times that I talked spoke about this. Now let's go to this loop instruction or loop based. Uh, Function in this case, as usual, the prologue would start with push EBP move ESP to EBP sub ESP. Here we can see that the variable EBP plus variable C um, is pushed with value zero. Then there's a jump to this specific instruction, and a compare is being made. Here, the comparison is between uh, EBP plus variable C, which I'm gonna EBP minus 12. So it seems like EBP minus 12 would indicate that it's actually subtracting um, the instructions and so the argument that it, it does not really have an argument it's basically keeping a variable value in EBP minus 12 in this case usually if it's a minus which means that these are local um, instructions uh, I'm sorry local variables if it was plus then it's usually an argument so now we know that it's um, you know the EBP minus 12 is where the local variable is kept with the value 0 it's going to compare the value against 9 if it's less it jumps over here uh, which basically does uh, you know again I'm going to simplify everything so that it's easier for us to see things in uh, uh, basically in uh, the decimal format as opposed to uh, the format of uh, uh, as opposed to other formats which are like um, the hexadecimal format and stuff like that so I'm gonna do that and so now we can see that EBP minus 12 is moving to EAX and that value EAX is moving to ESP plus 4 ESP plus 4 means that it's basically again decrementing the, the pointer so it's pushing the value on ESP plus 4 um, so that's the way sorry I, this is what I wanted to indicate is that rather than doing a push Basically, GCC based compilers would push the value into an ESP plus, you know, plus some register variable that would become an argument for another function. So, quickly we'll come to know about it, and then you can see that ESP plus 4 has the EX, which was 0 in the first case, which we had copied from here. Um, and then it basically um, pushes person D and then calls printf, which indicates that 
um, you know, the, the very first value is being printed. So in this case, zero would be printed. And then again, it moves 10 into uh, the pointed ESP plus 10 um, and then calls put character. So this is with respect to uh, the fact that it's putting 10 over there. And so this is a static hardcoded value. Um, usually in this case, whenever there's a put character, that means that there is no uh, person format specifier, which means that it is some static string that is being pushed. In this case, this is 10. Um, basically, this is, if we go back again and look at this variable, well, this is 0AH. And if you remember, 0A in hexadecimal is slash n, which is what it's pushing. So it's basically we are doing a printf followed by a slash n. And then it basically does an e to the minus 12. So the same variable that we were looking at is increased by 1 and again moved back over here. So this is the do over here that I was talking about, where basically what we are doing is, you know, doing a, you know, compare a debug pointer to again 9. So we are, the loop is moving between 0 to 9. And every time it's basically printing out the, the variable value by incrementing the variable value and then just printing that value again and again until it hits 9. And when it becomes 9, then it will jump out and end out of this. And then, you know, we come back again over here. Um, and that results into, you know, uh, a fact of uh, move, move, it's basically moving 1 into EX and then calling leaves. So that's probably a return 1 and then ends the end pointer. So just again, a quick overview for a loop. It takes the variable value, puts it in e to minus 1, which is local variable. This local variable is compared over here against 9. And then again, you can see that that variable value is being printed out. Um, and then again, a comparison is being made. And then if it works, then do some printing. So that covers up the loop part of the instruction. Let's very quickly look at um, function by reference. I'm going to quickly load this for us. Uh, <coughs> let's see. Uh, try to move it to the graph view. Unfortunately, I'm not able to. But anyways, uh, here we can see that EBP minus 1 CH, EBP minus 12 C, 20, are being filled up with certain values. Uh, so 1, 3, and 7 are being filled up. I'm going to actually convert. So as we had seen in the past, uh, so in this case, we can see that the values 1, 3, and 7 are being pushed on to EPP minus 28, EPP minus 32, and EPP minus 36. These are the local variables that are created inside the main function. Since we are already in the main function, you can look at it. Now, um, EX is loaded with EBP minus 36, so 7 is loaded into EX, and then it's pushed into ESP plus it. Again, this indicates a GCC-based compiler. Um, if this was a C++ Visual Studio compiler, it would have been a push EX. Um, so ESP plus 8 is being pushed, so we know that there are three um, parameters that are being passed, and we can obviously see that I, you know, Adapto has identified that for us, but if it wasn't the case, then we would have to figure out how many you know pointers or parameters is this function taking. Then again, we are doing a dot ex ex with the to minus thirty two, and we are pushing that in ESP plus four and finally here. So one, three, and seven values are being pushed as seven, three, and one, um, and then we are calling this duplicate function. And so now we come over here. Here we can see that EPP plus eight, which is a seven value, is moved into ex. Here you can see that rather than um, moving the actual video, we can see that this uh, uh, indirect addressing or uh, addressing mode is being used where you are surrounded by a square bracket that indicates that um, the value that was moved in EPP plus 8 was actually the address of the value 7. And that's what I wanted to indicate is that you know, rather than moving actual 7, if we go back again, we can see that um, the address of you know, whatever value is in EBP minus 36 is moved into EX and so on. However, when we get over here, it seems like uh, the actual value, which is EBP plus 8, which should have been 7, 
is moved um, into EAX but then again it's also dereferencing that value which indicates that this is an address that is moved into EAX similarly um, load EAX EAX plus EAX move EAX plus EBP plus 8 uh, it sort of does the same thing again you're moving the value so here we can see that uh, it seems like EAX plus EAX is added that means um, the value um, in EAX is added twice and moved into EDX again um, we are moving uh, EAX with EPP plus 8 which is the same value so 7 is moved over there and we can see that um, the address uh, whatever it was in EDX is being moved into the address of EAX so uh, from that we kind of come to know that this is uh, you know adding basically the value variables that is 7 plus 7 uh, let's move down to over here which is removing EDP plus 08 which is EDP plus 12 which would indicate that this is a variable for EP plus 12 is moving to EX again the same fix EX plus EX is being done and then again the variable value is moved back into EX which is again passed by uh, reference it's not passed by value that's what I was indicating and then finally EDX is moved into EX which is the address of EX finally again EBP plus 10 H which means EBP plus 16 So again, uh, the parameter value for EP plus 16 is moving to EX. We move whatever this in EX and the address of EX is moved into EX. Then addition is being done with that specific value um, and that value is moved into EDX. Finally, we are moving again EP plus 16 into EX and moving the value of EDX into EX, which means we are adding the value. So it seems like in this case, um, once you move inside the specific function, you are actually doing sort of uh, a multiplication by two, which is why it's doing an addition twice um, to do that. And I guess a way to see that would be to see fun.exe, and that sort of uh, you know does indicate the same aspect. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any other questions, please contact me. Um, on the YouTube blogs and that should indicate how you know I can apply back to you. Thanks again.